Yet VCM, welcome to this new build of the T55 AM. The base kit is from Tacom. We've got some juicy upgrades. Check out the review if you haven't seen it. And uh, I discuss quite a lot of the stuff that we're going to add onto this build. The construction of this kit is pretty straightforward. It is one of the easier T55s to build. Basically, just a little bit more complex than the legendary old Tamiya kit. And this one, of course, is greatly improved as well. The construction of the road wheels, pretty good. There's some nice detail. You have to make some corrections on it. Uh, basically removing the rubber mold lines from what would be the surface that is worn by abrasion against the track. And I'm going to come back to these road wheels as well. I sort of start my weathering process really at this stage, at the construction stage. Start thinking about your subject early on. It'll help you out because then you can plan much more towards your end result. This T55AM, basically an upgraded T55, additional armor and stuff. So we have an additional bow plate that goes on. And here I'm drilling out some holes because we add on some additional under chassis protection, which is this big plate that goes underneath. The suspension is really straightforward. Not too many components as compared to, let's say the uh, uh, mini mini art kit upper hull is made out of three components make sure you got it on a nice flat surface it'll really help you out join hull together fit is pretty dang good in fact there I didn't use any filler at all on the basic construction of the plastic parts at this point, I'm dry fitting on the road wheels. This is to enable me to construct the tracks. Now, if you saw the previous video, I did say I was going to use some frill model tracks. That didn't work out because they were totally wrong for this tank. What I tend to do with build up tracks is make up a jig, which consists of a piece of cardboard and some double sided tape. Really, really simple. And then I measure the flat run against the actual tank and glue the links together. Simple as that. Here we are. Here's the mini arm, the juicy resin components. This is a correction kit. There are some improvements and also there's some additional boxes that are part of a T55 AM. Now you need to get these parts free of the resin pouring blocks. I use a razor saw and in some cases being very careful you can use your side cutters as well to remove the pouring stubs. Make sure they're sanded nice and flat. And now that the tracks are all set, we can remove them and set them to side as we start to attach on the fenders. Added on the fenders at this stage, really because most of these upgrade components are either on the turret or additional fuel tanks and boxes that are fitted on these on these fenders there is a few photo etch parts as well so a bender will come in handy to construct and uh, make those components and this is something that i've started to do with photo etch especially on tanks is to coat them with uh, mr surfacer it gives them a more well unique appearance i would say not a unique appearance an appearance as if there's sort of layers of paint on them also it helps really bed them on the plastic that's the main reason now as a process of sort of elimination i added on all the plastic pops then i added on the resin and here's another little upgrade a uh, proper dowel there to replicate the unditching log this is the mantlet which is one of the best parts of this upgrade really nicely detailed you do need to bore it out in order for the brass barrel to fit in and i used a pilot hole and then I gradually increased the size of the hole until the barrel fitted i'm going to say with these uh, with this resin upgrade set it's really really straightforward very very easy everything sort of drop fit the only sort of difficulty if even if you can call it difficulty is this is the uh, gunner sight 
you have to sort of pare down the plastic to get a good fit. Now I decided to remove the molded on conduits and cables that are the electrical supplies to both the lunar searchlight and the smoke grenade dischargers. And you just saw there fitted on the so-called Brezhnev Brovia Bronya or the Brezhnev eyebrow armor. There's the laser rangefinder fitted on at this stage. And also I added on some other details from other manufacturers, just other resin parts, just to make the build easier. The gun barrel was detailed up. I use plastic sprue in preference to the very small PE sort of parts, just because it's very difficult for getting the bond on the brass. Now fitting on these uh, resin 12.7 ammo cans and just check fitting the resin supplied. Commander's coupler and Gunner's Coupler. Now I've got some Botchka here, which are barrels. Just use these out of laziness. 3D printed, no seam lines, pretty easy. This stage, I am refitting the wires using lead wire, just because it's malleable, easy to use. The reason I really did that is that I was able to feed the wires to the actual components that would have that electrical supply. Did a small modification on the side skirts, roughed it up with some sandpaper, and also I really worked the sanding stick in order to get it down, pared down in thickness. And this is sort of the last sort of detail that I'm sort of adding on. These are, uh, this is sort of like a point I'm say, saying about weathering. Combining at this stage, basically thinking about what I'm gonna portray later on and incorporating that in the construction. This is just part of the upgrade set, a bit of uh, brass to replace the protection for the uh, exhaust outlet. And here, as I said, go back to the road wheels, taking out very, very small chunks. What am I depicting here? Well, you can see it's a pretty hard used tank and not a piece of scrap metal by any means, but the road wheels are a bit worn. It's had a bit of a hard life. The 12.7 millimeter machine gun has been removed. Now, here we go on to what would be called priming, pre-shading, using my favorite, Mr. Surfacer Black. I don't need to coat absolutely everything entirely black, but I want to get it into the deep recesses. At this stage, I use NATO Black as the color to depict the uh, rubber on the side skirts, but I've, I'll come to that, that later on. And also, of course, the rubber portion of the road wheels. Don't forget there's a rubber portion as well on the rear of the fenders. Now, in order to affect a little bit of mottling, I've started to do this recently on a few builds. If you check my T72, some, I did something similar. Instead of using white uh, in that black and white technique or so-called black and white technique, I use a deck tan or a buff. Could probably use a brown as well, a light brown. And I'm just sort of uh, mottling on lighter shade on top of the primer of the the black mr servicer and that is sort of going to serve as a guideline for this stage which is taking your favorite russian green and starting to apply the camouflage color notice the application here not thick thick coats instead light misty coats the idea here is to create the mottled effect so you want a little bit of the dark showing through. You want a little bit of the light showing through. However, it is pretty important though that the thing ends up looking green at the end. And this is what I'm saying again about weathering at this stage. Is it a painting step? Is it a weathering step? Well, I think they're all sort of joined together even at the early stages. And by doing this, it just makes our weathering a little bit easier in that by creating this paint wear effect, sort of this mottling, it's just gonna be easier to go on top of that with the layers, as you're gonna see when we get into what we call traditional weathering. I masked off a portion of the side skirts here, and also I use this uh, circular template is here to uh, paint in the green portion of the road wheels. Really easy, quick job. Now I took my base green, 
And also I lightened it up. I think I lightened it up with that deck tan from if memory serves me right. And again, adding on further contrast, if you want to call it a contrast, lighter patches again to depict a more faded, worn paint. The idea is to create a little bit of uh, disuniformity or whatever. Don't call it modulation. Modulation is a ridiculous term. Just call it painting. Unmasking the side skirts at this stage. And of course, that portion at the rear. I thought that the NATO black wasn't faded enough. I think I would have been better to use a um, is it German gray paint. That would might have done it. But what I've done is I'm just using the paintbrush acrylics here, layering on some, uh, well, so-called Andrea black. You can see it's a gray and the gray basically creates that further sort of worn rubber effect, which is a bit more in tune with the subject. Let's go on the tracks now. Really easy, quick method here. Just a base coated in a dark brown. And also, here we go, painting in the details here. Had to get out the brush here just to paint in these details. They could have been masked off, but for the time it takes to mask them, etc., there's nothing wrong with getting out a paintbrush. And I used uh, various colors of acrylic paints, and this is a highlighting method. This can be massively overdone if you choose a shade that is too stark to the base color. So I try to just basically use a lighter shade. We're just popping detail here. That's all we're doing. This used to be done by dry brushing and heck, dry brushing still is pretty good for this. But uh, a more, well, modern technique here is using acrylics to uh, pop up the raised detail in certain places. Yeah, I try pretty hard not to overdo it because uh, if you do overdo it, your weathering's gonna have to really work hard to tone down something that sticks out unnaturally. I don't wanna create massively contrasted details. I want them to be in tune with the weathering. Paying some details there, the Pioneer tools, the rubber portions that join up the fuel links. And now let's uh, weather up this track. <clears throat> Really super easy way to do this uh, using acrylic paints. I use a wet on wet technique. I don't even use a paintbrush for this because the paint will naturally go into the recessed portions of the tracks. This is a wonderful product. It is a pigment, which is already in an acrylic solution. And again, applied using a piece of sponge. No need to use a brush. This process really, really quick. And you'll see the result just of course in a second. I like to try and be quick with the, with the tracks now. Uh, I started using acrylics recently just for that portion. There you can see the, the uh, pigment sort of bound in and also applied on the roadway as well. I want to create a blending. This is what happens uh, if you apply it on flat surfaces. Just a demonstration. I just demonstrated that to my Patreons to show you what happens if the uh, pigment is not blended. You get these uh, interesting pooled uh, appearances or little islands of pigment that uh, look a little bit unnatural. You can join on the tracks at this stage. There we are, both sides. And now we're gonna add a little bit of variation onto the side skirts using hairspray technique. What I did was masked off one section of skirt and then painted on this uh, interesting color, Sky from uh, Tamiya. And then using of course, water, we degrade this. What am I trying to show here? Maybe just uh, unusual rubber side skirt was replaced from another vehicle. You know, there's all sorts of random things that happen to AFVs if uh, if you ever see them in the field, or of course, if you've served, you, you know what really happens, uh, you know, on the, on the reality of uh, exercises, combat, etc. Applied uh, some water stickers at this stage and here we're going to do a application of an enamel thinner, uh, enamel wash rather. Uh, I would recommend that you take heed of starting to learn to dilute 
these products because out of the bottle they are massively uh, opaque actually and they will well sort of obliterate the effects that you may have been wanting to actually just enhance so this is the so-called uh, filter technique how does it vary well as you can see the brush is more damp and it's applied overall the idea is not to let this sort of accumulate in in details but you're just providing an overall brown coat on top of the paint okay now people say that you're meant to do things in certain orders and uh, that is uh, not correct i'm going in with pigments at this stage pigments are probably one of the best products and also natural earth as well to create actual real dirt effects in the way that it actually has a texture a texture of dirt mod etc so it's been applied in two ways i use this micro brush flicking it on to the sort of uh, more exposed surfaces and also put clumps of it in areas where this dirt may accumulate on exercise that's the idea and also i made sure that the turret as well got a little bit of a coating of this and of course the road wheels and tracks the idea of course when you're adding in these nature effects is that they occur all over the vehicle okay now let's uh, make up some homebrew stuff using good old humbrels the idea here is to dig out some of that thick gloop out the bottom which is of course the pigment and then use a higher quality enamel wash to create your own uh, well this is going to be basically dirt effects now you can see here the application is different to what we did with the filter the brush here is just a, a sort of a vehicle to transport this wash across the vehicle the thing here is not to paint it on because if you do, you're gonna ruin this pigment. The pigment will sort of end up being uh, paintbrush streaked. It won't look right. You want it to be in clumps. So using the capillary of the brush or of the vehicle to sort of add this effect on. Of course, we're adding on the effects of nature, which is, you know, the realities of, of vehicles, of everything, of everything in life, everything on planet Earth is nature. So. It shows a uh, appropriate tone here that sort of you know the sandy and the like lighter colors work much better with the dark green vehicles added a few streaks here at this stage as well just blending the wash upwards and you're going to see how those will appear later on and of course we can flick it on as well this mixture all over the vehicle to create small splash effects now this is what we would call a traditional pin wash effect and that's what it is using my well basically my favorite sort of enamels and of course this is going to contrast highly against what we just did uh, you're going to see in a minute that uh, this dark wash here uh, and now you can see how the sand colored earth effects have dried i don't want to obliterate all them some of them are lying in areas which you would choose to pin wash but we're not going to do that we're going to well randomize it a bit so there might be a little bit of sand wash in one area and then in other areas we're going to add some of this darker wash and if we call it wash we can call it paint as well that's exactly what it is okay so you can use this as well this darker mixture to create areas of darkened light uh, effects on those grills as you saw and here you can see the the pigments being uh, the pigments the darker wash being applied just on some of the details but not all of them that's the idea do not forget all your ancillaries all your details they need to have the same effects all over the vehicle if you don't they'll stick out like a sore thumb and once again on the back deck here back deck here of course the engine deck a surface that attracts grime oil all that sort of stuff so using the darker wash as well we create a further layer now this is uh, a pretty good color actually for uh, worn effects if you're um, into uh, chipping vehicles how do you chip a vehicle do you bring it down to a rusty battered hulk or do you do something else well from my experience and from references 
the typical sort of chipping is not really chipping it's more scratches and that's those scratches aren't down to bare metal this is basically how the vehicles are operated and uh, for people that serve you know that these uh, that we bring these vehicles into what are called lagers into camps into forested areas and what happens is the tree branches sort of scrape along the vehicle and they don't obviously it's a tree branch they don't scratch down the bare metal what they do is they sort of erode the paint down to a lighter color so that is the effect that we're trying to go here and actually this is uh one of i asked my patrons about this do you want to see any rust effects on here yes or no they actually went for no so the only rust effects we have are the on the tracks and the vehicle itself although it looks worn it is not in in line with traditional sort of chipping it's uh, more following what i see and my experience so that, that's what i like to depict on my afes tried a little experiment here with the pencil have to be honest didn't work out too well here's the vehicle recovery cables they've already been base coated this product from uh, mr hobby is really good for dry brushing on to create the uh, metallic effects those get placed in a position and also they need to be super glued in a position to hold them there the idea here is that i know they're not in the actual mounted positions but it's as if the vehicles recovered at one stage and the crew or the recovery crew were just too lazy to put them back in a position just checking out the uh the mounting positions for the gunner's hatch and we're making again this wash this this wash again the humbrel stuff this time i'm being very careful here i need to get all the clumps out of this those clumps helped us when we were doing the uh, brush work but we're going to be applying by airbrush now so you know just the same as paints again now uh, i don't show this very well but the airbrush needs to be a fair distance away from the subject what we need to do is miss this on and this really is just a great way of creating dust effects if you go in too close and you can see it visibly see it uh you're actually going to be obliterating a lot of the work and the steps that you've already done so all that chipping work and all that stuff you could pretty much wipe it out if you go in too heavy now the difference here is this is where i do go in close i use a paper mask here and this is the atypical dust tide mark that you get on afvs so we've achieved that and also can you see the streaking underneath yes the streaking still there hasn't been eliminated let's go on with some uh, black smoke pigment and creating a typical oily filthy diesel exhaust of t55s t72s those big engines just pump out uh, absolutely disgusting amounts of stuff uh, greta uh, Thunberg would probably have an embolism if she saw how these things operate. Now, final details here. Adding on the, uh, this is a ivory color depicting the caps that are on the vehicle marker lights. Now, one disadvantage with the resin parts was that they do not have uh, transparent details. So I painted them in using clear black or clear crystal black blue. I, I think that's what it was. Adding a few human touches here. This is what I... I like to do this on my AFVs. Sort of a little human came here and he decided to throw his pop can basically where he thought people would not find it. And also one of the uh, the engineers decided to leave his, uh, his ratchet uh, wrench there as well. And also a part of the engine seems to be mislaid and a few cans there. I just like adding these sort of more uh, contrasting type effects graphite uh, pencil or graphite stick here to add in the uh, contact points on the tracks and also being mega subtle with this do not hit this too heavy if you go in too heavy it looks kind of weird but obviously what we're doing is areas of that have gone down to sort of be polished on the vehicle and i, I really try and be sparing with, with, with that and also just randomize it up a little bit and i can see here closely as well you can see the effects of the dust as well 
And there we are. This is the vehicle completed, all the weathering steps, all done. I painted up some crew and these get added into position. And there we are. I hope you enjoyed the build. Check out Patreon if you want to learn more.